Battle of Lati was a 1918 Finnish Civil War battle, fought from 19 April to the 1st of May between the German troops and Finnish whites against the Finnish Reds in Lati, Finland. Together with the Battle of Viberg, from 24 to 29 April, it was the last major battle of the war. The German unit detachment Brandenstein, commanded by the Colonel Otto von Brandenstein, attacked Lati on 19 April, taking the town by the next evening. At the same time, a column of tens of thousands of Red refugees, was approaching Lati from the west. On the 22nd of April, the Reds launched a counter-attack in order to break through the German lines and clear way for the fleeing people. The attempt failed and the Reds finally surrendered on 1 May. As a result, the Whites and Germans captured about 30,000 Reds and their family members who were placed to a concentration camp in the outskirts of Lati. Chapter 1 – Background At the time of the Finnish Civil War, Lati had a population of 6,500. The town was important for the Reds due to its location by the vital Rihimaki St. Petersburg Railway, connecting Lati to the major war theatres in Tavastia and Karelia. Red troops were formed and trained in the Henela garrison which the Russians had built in the early 1910s. As the Red Front had collapsed in the northern part of Tavastia and the Battle of Tampere was over in 6 April, tens of thousands of Red refugees headed east through Hermenlina and Lati. In the late April, there were about 40,000 Reds inside the triangle formed by the towns of Hermenlina, Rihimaki, and Lati. The German Baltic Sea Division landed in Hanko on 3 April. After the victorious Battle of Helsinki, fought 12-13 April, the division marched north to Rihimaki and Hermenlina, which forced the Red refugees to head to Lati. Another German unit, Detachment Brandenstein, landed 75 kilometers east of Helsinki in Lovisa the 12th of April. The original plan for Detachment Brandenstein was to attack the Red stronghold of Kortka, and then cut the St. Petersburg Railway in Kovala. For some reason, the Germans finally decided to move north to Lati, instead of Kortka in the east. Chapter 2 – German Offensive As the Germans reached Lati along the lovisa visijavi railway, the Reds started building trenches, artillery batteries and other defensive posts to the slopes of the Salpor selka ridge. In 13 April, the detachment Brandenstein took the Orimatila village 20 km south of Lati. The offensive against the town was launched six days later on 19 April at 5 am. The main force commanded by the Lieutenant Colonel von Luck took the village of Villard, 9 km east of Lati, at 1 pm and cut the St. Petersburg Railway, while the second unit attacked Lati and reached the railway station at 7 am without any resistance. After taking the Henela garrison, the Germans entered the town in the evening. Colonel Luck and his men headed for the General Hospital at 10 p.m. and most of Lati was held by the Germans by 11 p.m. All this happened with hardly any resistance by the surprised Reds. Instead of the town itself, the Reds were only defending their positions in the Salpor Selka Ridge. It is unclear why the attack took the Reds by surprise, as they knew the Germans were approaching. One explanation is their poor reconnaissance and surveillance. On the morning of 20 April, the Germans reached the harbour by the Visijavi Lake. At the same time, the Finnish White Army Division, commanded by the Estonian Major Hans Kalm, entered the town from north as the Reds on the Radio Marquee Hill had surrendered. The German commander Colonel Otto von Brandenstein and Hans Kalm greeted each other in a modest ceremony held in the Lati Main Street. On the next day, a small clash occurred as a group of 1,000 Red Guard fighters came by armoured train to Okoinen, a village in Holola, 5 kilometres south of Lati. The Reds tried to break into the town but were pushed back. During the first two days of the battle, the Germans lost six men killed. Red losses were at least 37 killed and 500 captured. 300 more were captured within next three days as the Germans searched for Reds in their homes. The ones found with a fired rifle were shot. Chapter 3 – Red Counter-Attack and Capitulation 
As the column of refugees reached the outskirts of Lati, the Reds launched a counter-attack on the 22nd of April. They were desperately trying to break the German lines and march through the town to continue their journey eastward, but managed only to take the Henneler garrison. In the next morning, the Red artillery started firing on the town. The bombing of German positions lasted for six days. At least 16 Reds were shot by the Germans as a retaliation for firing the military hospital. Some sources claim that even 60 Reds were executed, but this cannot be verified. The Whites, in turn, shot up to 30 Reds before the battle was over. No heavy fighting occurred in 25-28 April, but on 28 April the Reds launched another attack against the German lines. The fighting lasted for two days but despite their overwhelming strength, the Reds could not beat the experienced and well-armed German troops. The Germans had only about 800 men in Lati while the Reds had up to 10,000 armed men from western Finland and Helsinki region who had come with the refugee column. The problem for the Reds was that there was no order of battle and nobody commanded the force. There were only a couple of organized units, like the Turku Women's Guard and the squad composed of the youth section of the sports club jury Helsinki. The Germans in turn, managed in taking the Okoenen village by the Helsinki Railway on 30 April. They were now able to encircle the Red troops of the Henela garrison. In the morning of 1 May, the Germans attacked Henela but the Reds had already fled. At 8 a.m., the Reds started surrendering and the Battle of Lati was over, although there was still minor resistance in the surroundings of the town and five Germans were killed on 2 May. Chapter 4, Aftermath As the battle was over, the Germans and Finnish whites captured about 30,000 Reds in the surroundings of Lati. The numbers include Red Guards fighters and their family members as well as other Red supporters who had fled from the western and southern parts of the Red Finland. Among the captured was also the group of 4,000 to 5,000 Red refugees who had only a couple of days earlier fought their way through the German lines in the bloody Battle of Sirjantaka. Up to 10,000 Reds surrendered in the fields of Vasale in Holola, 10 kilometers west of Lati. Led by the military band of the Pori Red Guard, the group marched to Lati. The band was playing revolutionary anthems like the Internationale and La Marseilles until the Germans finally took their instruments. 22,000 captured Reds were gathered to the Felman camp, a short lived concentration camp in the fields of the Felman Manor. The rest of the Reds were placed in factories, schools, and other public buildings in Lati. A prison camp was also established, to the Henela garrison. The women and children were soon released from the Felman camp, and 13,000 Reds were moved to the Henela camp. Most of them were men, but among the detainees were also more than 1,000 women, and a smaller number of children. According to the past research, all women were released, but recent studies have shown that the women's Red Guard fighters were systematically executed by the whites and most likely sexually abused. At least 218 women were shot, the youngest being only 14-year-old girls. The total number of executed Reds was more than 500. The executions were carried out by the Finnish battalion led by the Estonian Colonel Hans Kalm. The Germans shot only approximately 20 to 30 Reds during the Battle of Lati, but did not participate the later executions. In some cases they were even trying to stop the Whites from executing their prisoners. The Germans usually robbed the killed as well as the captured Reds of their personal possessions. This was verified in the war diaries of the German officer Hans Trobst, Released as the sixth part of the 2015 book Der Krieg im Westen. The Henela camp was active until the end of September 1918. Nearly 1,200 of the 13,000 prisoners died of executions, disease, or malnutrition. Trenches and potholes are still visible in the Salp or Selka hills. They are preserved by the Finnish National Board of Antiquities because of the historical significance. Some of the trenches were accidentally destroyed in 2015 as new skiing trails were built for the 2017 Nordic World Ski Championships.